you could be forgiven for thinking that a candle is a rather simple object. But there is a surprising amount of complexity that goes into the design of a modern candle. I swear this is interesting. The basics of a candle are fairly, well, basic. You light the candle, the wax around the wick melts, flows up the wick, vaporises and burns. This combustion generates heat which melts more wax and the self-sustaining cycle continues. The fact that the fuel for the candle, usually paraffin wax, is also the structure of the candle is in itself a rather elegant design, but the true genius lies within the wick. The candle's wick is both the pathway for transporting the wax towards the flame and the means by which the wax is converted into a usable form. The wax is melted by the heat of the flame and drawn through the wick, where it vaporises, and it's this vaporised paraffin wax that fuels the candle's flame. You can see that it's not really the wick or the liquid wax that is burning, via a few demonstrations. If you hold a metal tube in the flame of the candle, some of the unburnt wax vapour will travel up the tube. You can then light this escaping vapour and have two flames from the one candle. The vaporised nature of the burning wax also explains the relighting candle trick that you may have seen. If we extinguish a candle and immediately apply a flame to the smoke rising from the wick, it will reignite. This is because there is still enough vaporised paraffin wax within the rising smoke, that when it meets an ignition source, it can combust. The liquid wax is drawn up through the wick, via capillary action, similar to how plants and trees draw water and nutrients up from the soil. The rate at which the wax is drawn up through the wick is dependent on a few factors. Capillary action is a product of the gaps between the individual fibres in the wick, so a tightly wound wick with smaller gaps between the fibres will allow less wax to flow through than a more loosely wound wick. The thickness of the wick itself also affects flow rate. A thicker wick, which has a larger cross-sectional area, will have a higher flow rate than a thinner wick. The wax flow rate is a surprisingly important factor in ensuring a candle burns properly. If the flow rate is too high, then the candle will burn too intensely, but if the rate is too low, then the flame will burn too weakly. A weak flame will not produce enough heat to melt the entire top layer of the candle, and as the candle burns, the wick will tunnel through the wax, leaving a ring of unburnt wax around the perimeter. The vaporised wax is what fuels the flame, not the wick, but the wick does still slowly burn. If you light a naked wick, it will burn too quickly, far too fast to create an effective candle. So how does a candle wick last for hours upon hours? A candle's flame is made up of a number of different regions, with temperatures hundreds of degrees apart. At the centre of the flame is an area of blue. Rich in oxygen, this area burns wax vapour cleanly, but is only around 800 degrees C. Above this is a darker orange region, where temperatures climb to around 1000 degrees C. The larger area of flame, with a more yellow hue, is around 1200 degrees. It's this area that produces the most light. As the carbon from the wax is heated, it begins to incandesce, generating significant amounts of light. The last region is at the very perimeter of the flame, and is a faint blue colour. Here, as the flame borders the oxygen-rich surrounding air, temperatures peak at around 1400 degrees C. The candle wick, nestled at the centre of the flame, is protected from the higher perimeter temperatures by the cooler core of the flame and the vaporised candle wax that the wick emits. But these higher temperatures at the perimeter of the flame can also serve a purpose. For hundreds of years, candles were the primary source of lighting in the home, but they required constant maintenance. As a candle burnt, the wax burned down faster than the wick did, leading to a longer and longer portion of the wick being exposed. This caused some problems. As the exposed wick grew, the flame became less stable, causing the candle to produce more soot and generally perform poorly. To counter this, candle wicks had to be trimmed roughly every half hour, which made them rather cumbersome. Now, it's still a good idea to trim modern candle wicks, but it's not the necessity that it used to be, and that's all thanks to some clever design. Modern wicks are generally designed to be self-trimming, by exploiting the higher temperatures found at the outer region of the candle's flame. As the wick is exposed from the candle's wax, it curls over slightly, exposing the tip of the wick to the increasingly intense heat of the outer layers of the candle's flame. 
here the wick burns away more rapidly, meaning the wick and the wax around it burn away at a more consistent rate. This keeps the candle burning cleanly and consistently, all with minimal user intervention, which makes the modern candle far more convenient and lower maintenance than its predecessors. Don't forget to subscribe. If you want to support my work and get a whole heap of extra content, you might consider supporting me on Patreon. You can find me at patreon.com forward slash the media ward. You might also like my podcast. You can find links to it down below or just search for the media ward podcast.